Hi, I'm James, a 20-year-old college student. Before I continue, please like and subscribe to the channel. Now, let me tell you about what my life was like before everything changed. I met Emily during my sophomore year at college. She was in one of my psychology classes, and we hit it off pretty quickly. She was smart, funny, and seemed genuinely interested in me. Our relationship started with late-night study sessions that turned into long conversations about life, dreams, and everything in between. For the first few months, things were great. We went on hikes, had movie nights, and even went on a couple of weekend trips. I thought I had found someone who truly understood and cared for me. One of our favorite memories was a trip to the mountains. We hiked all day, and by the time we reached the top, we were both exhausted but exhilarated. Emily looked at me and said, I could stay here forever with you. It felt like a promise of something lasting. My younger sister Sarah, who's 19, also got along well with Emily. Sarah is part of Emily's friend group, so they hung out a lot. Sarah and I have always been close. She's the kind of sister who will drop everything to help me out, and I've always tried to be there for her too. Emily had a group of friends that she spent a lot of time with. There was Rachel, the loud and outgoing one, Lily, who was more reserved but had a sharp sense of humor, Chloe, who was always up to date on the latest trends, and Jessica, who was Emily's best friend since high school. They all seemed to accept me into their group, and I felt lucky to be part of such a tight-knit circle. One evening, we all gathered at Emily's place for a small party. The vibe was good, music played in the background, and laughter filled the room. At one point, Rachel joked about how hard it was to find a decent guy these days. Emily smiled and squeezed my hand, saying, Well, I got lucky with James. It made me feel appreciated and special. But there were moments that, looking back, were subtle red flags. Emily sometimes made offhand comments about my inexperience. I shrugged them off, thinking she was just teasing. Sarah noticed these comments, too. One night, after one such incident, she pulled me aside. James, do you ever feel like Emily's not always respectful? She's just joking, Sarah. It's not a big deal. Yeah, but it doesn't always feel like a joke. I appreciated Sarah looking out for me, but I was in love and didn't want to see any flaws. I reassured her that everything was fine. Our one-year anniversary was coming up, and I wanted to make it special. I planned a surprise dinner at the place where we had our first date. I even got a small necklace with her birthstone. Emily seemed genuinely touched and happy that night. She kissed me and said, You always know how to make me feel special, James. But the closer we got to our anniversary, the more I started noticing the cracks. Emily would cancel plans last minute, saying she was too tired or had to be with her friends. The jokes about my inexperience became more frequent. It started to feel like I was a part of her life that she wasn't entirely proud of. The real turning point, though, was the girls' night out. Sarah went out with Emily and her friends. I stayed back, catching up on some schoolwork. The girls' night out had been planned for weeks. Sarah was excited, thinking it would be a fun night with Emily and her friends. They met at Emily's place before heading to a trendy new bar downtown. The group was lively, and laughter filled the air as they settled into a cozy corner with their drinks. So, any new guys in your life, Rachel? Lily asked, smirking over her cocktail. Please don't even get me started, Rachel groaned. They're all so immature. Emily jumped in. Well, at least you didn't have to deal with a guy who had no idea what to do in bed. The group laughed, but Sarah felt a twinge of discomfort. Emily continued, When I first got with James, he was such a clueless virgin. It was like teaching a child. Everyone burst out laughing, but Sarah's face turned red. She couldn't believe Emily was talking about her brother like this. She tried to keep her cool, sipping her drink and hoping the conversation would shift. But it didn't. And you won't believe this, Emily said, lowering her voice as if sharing a juicy secret. He has this weird mole on his back. It's like the size of a nickel, so unattractive. The laughter grew louder, and Sarah could feel her blood boiling. She slammed her drink down harder than she intended, causing the table to go silent for a moment. Something wrong, Sarah? Chloe asked, eyebrow raised. I'm just going to step outside for a bit, Sarah muttered, standing up and grabbing her bag. 
She needed air. She needed to get out of there before she said something she'd regret. Outside, Sarah took deep breaths, trying to calm herself. How could Emily be so cruel? She thought about calling me, but decided against it. Not now. Not while she was so angry. She decided to head home, unable to face the group again that night. Back at the apartment, I was in my room when I heard the front door open and close quietly. I stepped out to see Sarah heading straight to her room, her eyes red and puffy. Hey, Sarah, you okay? She didn't answer immediately, just shook her head and closed her door. Something was definitely wrong. I knocked gently. Sarah, can we talk? After a moment, the door opened. Sarah stood there, looking torn. She motioned for me to come in and sat on her bed, hugging her knees. It's Emily, she started, her voice shaky. She said some really horrible things about you tonight. I sat down next to her, trying to stay calm. Like what? She was mocking you in front of everyone. She talked about how you were a virgin when you started dating and made fun of your body. It was awful, James. I felt a mix of emotions, shock, anger, humiliation. She really said all that? Yeah, and everyone was laughing. I couldn't stand it, so I left. I could see the pain in Sarah's eyes. She was hurting for me, and that made me feel even worse. Thanks for telling me, Sarah. I need to talk to her about this. Please do. You deserve better than that. The next day, I waited for Emily to come over. When she walked in, I didn't waste any time. We need to talk. She looked confused, but followed me to the couch. What's up? Sarah told me what you said last night, about me, in front of your friends. Her expression shifted from confusion to annoyance. She told you? Why would she do that? That's not the point, Emily. The point is, why would you say those things? It was just a joke, James. You're taking it too seriously. Too seriously? You humiliated me. You mocked personal things about me in front of everyone. She rolled her eyes. Oh, come on. It's not that big of a deal. It is to me. And what you said about Sarah? Totally unacceptable. She scoffed. This is ridiculous. I can't believe you're making such a big deal out of this. Believe it. This is serious. If you can't see that, then maybe we shouldn't be together. Her eyes widened. Are you breaking up with me over this? Yes, I can't be with someone who disrespects me and my family. She stared at me for a moment, then stood up abruptly. Fine. If that's how you feel, then we're done. As she walked out, I felt a strange mix of relief and sadness. I knew it was the right thing to do, but it didn't make it any easier. Sarah came out of her room and gave me a hug. You did the right thing, James. Thanks, Sarah. I just wish it didn't have to be like this. Me too, but we'll get through it. Together. We sat there in silence for a while, the weight of the betrayal hanging heavy in the air. The days after the breakup were tough. Sarah and I leaned on each other a lot. She faced backlash from her friends for standing up for me, which made things even harder. Rachel texted me today, Sarah said, dropping her bag on the couch. Yeah? What did she say? She accused me of being a traitor, said I should have kept quiet. That's ridiculous. You did the right thing. I know, but it sucks. I feel like I'm losing all my friends. We'll get through this. Together. That evening, while we were watching TV, I had an idea. We need to do something about Emily. People need to see her true colors. What do you mean? We gather evidence, get witness statements, show everyone what she's really like. Sarah nodded slowly. Yeah, but how do we do that without stooping to her level? Carefully. We'll talk to people who were there. Get their accounts. Maybe even record her if she slips up again. Over the next week, we started discreetly gathering evidence. Sarah talked to a few of her friends who were uncomfortable with Emily's behavior. Hey, Lily, can I ask you something about that night? Sure, what's up? When Emily was making those comments about James, how did you feel? It was awkward. I didn't like it, but I didn't say anything. Would you be willing to say that on record? We're trying to show people who she really is. Yeah, I guess so. I just don't want to get dragged into drama. We'll keep it anonymous. Just need your account. We recorded Lily's statement and a few others. The pieces were starting to come together. Then, we had a stroke of luck. Emily texted me out of the blue, wanting to talk. I agreed to meet her in a public place, 
hoping to get more evidence. So why did you want to meet? I asked, trying to sound neutral. I wanted to explain. Things got out of hand. You think? I said, keeping my voice steady. Look, I was just joking. I didn't mean to hurt you. You called Sarah a snitch and blamed her for everything. She shouldn't have told you. It was private. Private? You humiliated me in front of everyone. I'm sorry, okay? Can we just move past this? I shook my head. No, Emily, you don't get it. This isn't something I can just forget. I discreetly recorded the conversation, capturing her dismissive attitude and lack of genuine remorse. When I got home, Sarah and I listened to it together. This is perfect, Sarah said. People need to hear this. We decided to reveal everything at a big college event, a charity fundraiser where we knew Emily and her friends would be. We coordinated with a few friends who were in on the plan. The night of the event, Sarah and I arrived early to set up. We had a small projector and speakers ready. As people started gathering, Emily and her friends arrived, laughing and chatting as if nothing was wrong. When the time was right, I stood up. Excuse me, everyone, can I have your attention? The room quieted, and Emily looked up, confused. I want to share something important, I continued. It's about Emily and what she's been saying behind my back. I played the recordings and showed the statements from witnesses. The room was silent, then murmurs started spreading. Emily's face turned pale as she realized what was happening. How could you do this? Rachel shouted at Emily. I trusted you. Emily tried to defend herself, but it was clear she was losing. People started walking away from her, shaking their heads in disgust. After the event, Sarah and I felt a sense of relief. The truth was out, and Emily was finally facing the consequences of her actions. Feels good, doesn't it? Sarah said, smiling. It does. Thanks for sticking with me through this. Always, James. We're in this together. We walked out of the event, knowing we had done the right thing. It wasn't just about revenge. It was about standing up for ourselves and making sure people like Emily couldn't get away with their toxic behavior. Later that night, back at our apartment, Sarah and I sat down, exhausted but relieved. Do you think she'll learn from this? Sarah asked, curling up on the couch. Honestly, I don't know, but at least now people know the truth and we can move on. I hope so. I'm just glad it's over. The next few days were a whirlwind. Word about the event spread quickly across campus. Emily's friends distanced themselves from her, and she faced a lot of backlash on social media. People she thought were her friends turned their backs on her, leaving her isolated. One afternoon, as Sarah and I were walking to class, we saw Emily sitting alone on a bench, looking lost. Do you feel bad for her? Sarah asked, glancing at me. Not really. She brought this on herself. Maybe it's what she needs to realize her mistakes. We continued walking, determined to focus on our own lives. In the weeks that followed, Sarah and I found new circles of friends who were supportive and kind. I started dating again, slowly building a relationship with someone who respected me for who I was. Sarah also reconnected with old friends who had her back through thick and thin. As for us, we were ready to embrace new beginnings, armed with the knowledge that we could overcome anything together. That's the end of the story. Do you think Emily deserved the backlash she received? Or was there a better way to handle the situation? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. And if you enjoyed the story, please like the video and subscribe to our channel for more content like this. Thanks for watching.